Welcome to the Keeping It Simple series for biochemistry. We're going to start off by uh, talking about our favorite slide. Now, we've seen this several times, so I'm not going to drill you on it. Let's talk about energy use. We said plasma glucose starts, uh, sorry, we said plasma glucose lasts two to four hours. Then we said liver glycogen starts at four hours and lasts 24 to 28 hours, but I told you to remember that some books say 24 to 36 hours, so don't get tripped up. Muscle proteins start at 36 hours and last three to four days. Adipose tissue lipids start at 36 hours and last up to three weeks. And ketones start at 36 hours and keep the brain alive until the very end. We start all the biochemistry with glucose, whether we are in an anabolic state or in a catabolic state. We always have to either have enough glucose around to store it or break down glucose to turn it into energy. The most used form of energy in our body, remember, is ATP. Let's discuss forms of sugars, beginning our discussion uh, by talking about monosaccharides. Monosaccharides are the easiest sugars for our bodies to break down, hence they are often referred to as simple sugars. Anything that enters into glycolysis can eventually turn into fat. This is why foods that are high in simple sugars, such as soda or high fructose corn syrup, can lead to, obesi uh, to, can lead to obesity. So let's talk about individual monosaccharides. We'll start by talking about glucose. Glucose is the most commonly used form of sugar. It's broken down via glycolysis and stored via glycogenesis. Okay? Fructose is commonly found in fruits and it enters into glycolysis after the rate limiting step. Galactose is commonly found in all milk products and galactose enters into glycolysis after the first step. So we talked about monosaccharides, let's talk about disaccharides now. Let's start by talking about sucrose. Sucrose is broken down into one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose. So fructose and? Glucose. Glucose and? Fructose. Excellent. Lactose is broken down into one molecule of glucose and one molecule of galactose. So glucose and galactose. Galactose and? Glucose. Glucose and? Galactose. Galactose and? Glucose. Excellent. Then we have lactulose. And lactulose is broken down into one molecule of galactose and one molecule of fructose. So fructose and? Galactose. Galactose and? Fructose. Excellent. And maltose is broken down into two molecules of glucose. Two molecules of? Glucose. Excellent. We talked about monosaccharides. We talked about glucose, fructose, and galactose. Then we talked about disaccharides, sucrose, lactose, lactulose, and maltose. Now let's talk about polysaccharides. Starch. Starch is the molecule that plants use to store glucose. It's very similar to glycogen for mammals. Uh, it just takes longer to metabolize. Since starch takes much longer to metabolize or, and for us to break down, foods with high quantities of starch are often called complex carbohydrates or complex carbs. So this is a food like bread, pasta, rice, cereals, etc. So then we have cellulose. And cellulose, this is the molecule that plants use to make cell walls and it cannot be broken down by any biochemical cycle in the body. Since cellulose cannot be broken down, it has to go through the GI tract and it scrubs the GI tract on its way through. Cellulose is a scientific name for fiber. So when we talk about these pathways, we want to talk about you know, what activates uh, in the catabolic state, what activates in the anabolic state, what inhibits in the catabolic state, what inhibits in the anabolic state. So let's start by talking about uh, catabolic state activators. Remember that substrates typically activate. So that's just a rule that you need to know overall. So substrates typically activate. Substrates typically? Activate. In the catabolic state, we talk about our activators. We have low energy state or stress, and this is signaled by ADP and equivalents, as well as NAD and FADH. So ADP, NAD, and FADH. So ADP, NAD, and FADH. Go ahead. ADP, NAD, FADH. Excellent. So low energy state or stress is signaled by ADP, NAD, and FADH. So your turn, go. ADP, NAD, FADH. Perfect. So the catabolic state is controlled by stress hormones, so these will be activators. And we have epinephrine, glucagon, cortisol, and growth hormone. And remember in our previous lecture, we talked about when these different things, these hormones come in uh, and at what times during the stress response. So we have epi, glucagon, cortisol, and growth hormone. Epinephrine, okay, so, okay, so there we go. And, uh, so epinephrine, glucagon, cortisol, and growth hormone. But let's review that again. So epinephrine, remember, is the shortest acting stress hormone. Uh, 
Glucagon and cortisol are the long-acting stress hormones. Glucagon, remember, is the major controller of most catabolic pathways, and growth hormone serves to replenish some of the material that was broken down in the catabolic period. Okay, so we talked about the catabolic state activators, now let's talk about the anabolic state activators. Once again, our rule still holds that substrates typically activate. So uh, high energy state, this is gonna be signaled by ATP and equivalents like GTP and UTP. So in the catabolic state, we had ADP and equivalents, now we have ATP and equivalents as well as NADH and FADH2. So ATP, NADH, and FADH2. Your turn. ATP, NADH, FADH2. Excellent. And, it's, and, and, and uh, controlled by insulin, so we have, uh, remember, insulin is enhanced by gastric uh, inhibitory peptide, or GIP. And remember that insulin pushes glucose into cells, and glucose is our body's first and most abundant source of energy. So when there is enough glucose in our cells, our body will store up that glucose for later use, putting us in the anabolic state. There is still glucose in the cells in the catabolic state, but the lack of energy causes us to break down glucose to form energy through uh, further metabolism. So we talked about the activators for the catabolic state, and then we talked about activators for the anabolic state, and now we're gonna do inhibitors for the catabolic state, okay? So remember if that uh, substrates typically activate, that means products typically inhibit, so products typically Inhibit. Products typically? Inhibit. Excellent. So in the catabolic state, right, so we, we have to have signals, and uh, so like uh, low energy state or stress. So signals for high energy state will inhibit catabolism. So what are the signals for high energy state and what are the activators here? These are the same as the inhibit, uh, sorry, these are the same as the activators for the anabolic state we just discussed. So the same three. So ATP, NADH, and FADH2. So ATP, NADH and FADH2. Your turn. ATP, NADH, FADH2. Okay. Uh, insulin, remember, activates the anabolic state and turns off the stress hormones, all right? So in addition to this overview of activators and inhibitors, we will discuss the activators and inhibitors of each pathway in detail when the rate-limiting enzyme is discussed for that pathway. These last few slides should provide some concepts to fall back on if you can't figure out the exact substance that will activate or inhibit, right? But before we move on, we gotta talk about the inhibitors for the anabolic state. So anabolic state inhibitors, our rule still holds, these products typically inhibit and substrates typically activate. So uh, signals now for the low energy state will inhibit anabolism. And these three here are the same as the activators for the catabolic state, so ADP. NAD and FADH. So ADP, NAD, and FADH. Your turn. ADP, NAD, FADH. Glycolysis. Glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose. It's catabolic in most organs. It's anabolic in the liver. In the liver, it's? Anabolic. In most organs, it's? Catabolic. In the liver, it's? Anabolic. And in most organs, it's? Catabolic. It's the most active pathway in our body. It is controlled by insulin. It's controlled by? Insulin. Glycolysis is controlled by? Insulin. And glycolysis only occurs in the cytosol. Where does glycolysis occur? Cytosol. Excellent. Since glucose is the form of energy that our body uses first, and glycolysis occurs in both biochemical states, it is the most active pathway in our body at any given time. You gotta have the insulin around to push the glucose into the cells in order to run glycolysis. And when we talk about uh, that glycolysis occurs in the cytosol, why does it occur in the cytosol? Well, what cells in our body do not have mitochondria? Well, red blood cells don't. So red blood cells use glucose for energy. So if glycolysis did not happen in the cytosol, our red blood cells would have no energy, lice, and die. Here's a overview of the glycolysis pathway, all of it in detail, and we will be doing this step by step and reviewing these enzymes incrementally and then doing a full overview at the end. All right, let's start talking about these individual enzymes. Let's talk about hexokinase first. The substrate for hexokinase is glucose and the product is glucose 6-phosphate. The substrate is glucose, the product is glucose 6-phosphate. What's the product? Glucose 6-phosphate. Excellent. Cofactor here is, uh, the cofactors here are uh, magnesium, and ATP, ATP and? Magnesium. Magnesium and? ATP. ATP and? Magnesium. Excellent. So remember that kinase is phosphorylate, right? And we've talked about this before, but let's do it again now. So remember that phosphorylation makes the molecule larger and more charged, 
Therefore, it is harder for that molecule to cross the membrane, which means it is trapped inside the cell, so now these enzymes can act on it, okay? So phosphorylation makes it large and charged. Large and? Charged. Charged and? Large. Excellent, and that traps it inside the cell so enzymes can act on it. What's unique about hexokinase? Well, it phosphorylates any six carbon sugar using ATP. That's why it was listed there as a cofactor. It's located in all organs, and it has a low Km for glucose, which means it's active at all times, and it's irreversible. Now, where would this enzyme be most active? Well, what organs require the most energy? Well, that's going to go back to our question of what are the most important organs? So brain, heart, kidney. We talk about hexokinase, let's talk about glucokinase. It's the same. If you look, the substrate's the same, the product is the same, and the cofactors are the same. What's different here is this. Hexokinase works on all six carbon sugars and is therefore found in all organs. Glucokinase only works on glucose and therefore is only found in the liver and pancreas. So glucokinase is only found in the liver and pancreas. The pancreas and the? Liver. The liver and the? Pancreas. Excellent. And hexokinase is found everywhere. So we said glucokinase is only found in the liver and pancreas. This has a high Km for glucose. That means it's only active when lots of glucose is around. It's also irreversible. Okay, so remember, hexokinase, all organs, any six carbon sugar, low Km. Glucokinase, liver and pancreas, glucose only, high Km. All right, so it's a quick review of those two enzymes. Glycolysis, so we talked about Hexokinase, we talked about glucokinase, now we got to talk about phosphoglucoisomerase. What is this? So the substrate here is what we just left off with, and we left off with glucose 6-phosphate. So the product, okay, is fructose 6-phosphate. So glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. So what's the product? Fructose 6-phosphate. And no cofactors required here, okay? And remember, so why is this called phosphoglucoisomerase? It's because glucose and fructose are isomers of each other. This is reversible, unlike the previous two enzymes, which were not reversible. PFK1, phosphofructokinase 1. Okay, this is important because this is your rate-limiting enzyme. Okay? The rate-limiting enzyme for glycolysis is PFK1. The rate-limiting enzyme for glycolysis is? PFK1. Excellent. The substrate here is going to be fructose 6-phosphate, and the product is going to be fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So the product is? Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And the cofactors here are the same cofactors that we had for uh, hexokinase and glucokinase, and those were ATP and magnesium. Anytime we talk about rate-limiting enzymes, we talk about activators and inhibitors. So I'm going to mention them to you now, and I'll explain them to you here in a second. Your activators are there in green, insulin, glucagon, ADP, glucose. Insulin, glucagon, ADP, and glucose are the activators for a PFK1, which is the rate-limiting enzyme for glycolysis. One more time, okay? The activators are insulin, glucagon, ADP, and glucose. Repeat after me, insulin. Insulin. Glucagon. Glucagon. ADP. ADP. Glucose. Glucose. Now do all of them together on your own. Insulin. Glucagon. ADP. Glucose. Excellent.